folks, there is a hidden history that has been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world, and that's why we are on the trail of a Nephilim. We are talking about Robert Mirabal, Stilt Walker. Go back and check. Uh, first of all, watch the link and so you're up to speed, and then watch all the episodes. I think you'll find it real interesting. And today, we'll be doing the summary of that. But first, a word from our sponsor, Noble Gold. Now, stocks are at an all-time high. The economy is roaring. Houses are selling in a week. Interest rates are at zero. And the government just printed $5 trillion. What could possibly go wrong? Meanwhile, consumer confidence hit a 10-year low. And inflation hit 6.8%, with parts of the U.S. seeing rates as high as 8%. Something's not adding up, folks, is it? So what can you do? You can play it safe. Putting some of your assets into precious metals will keep your money away from the volatility markets and inflation and let you sleep at night. This month, Noble Gold is giving away a free America the Beautiful solid silver five-ounce coin with any qualifying plan you start. So talk to an expert at Noble Gold and they'll run through the options to keep your money safe. Always good to have hard assets, folks. No pressure, no hassling, no call centers. Just a chance to speak to someone who knows what they're talking about for once. How refreshing would that be? Start by calling 877-646-5347. Once again, that number, 877-646-5347. Or visit our website at noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. Folks, with everything that's going on, I highly recommend it. This is our 2021 snapshot from YouTube. We had 2.8 million viewers. Thank you for watching. Of course, the uh, the the uh, UFO disclosure, the coming great deception, Luciferian Endgame, was the most viewed video. Thank you for watching. Check out that film. We'll be talking about uh, more UFO sightings. This came from a man by the name of Stefan, and I'll read his report uh, on the other side of the break. Here we go. So this is Robert Mirabal. Um, Stilt Walker, and go back and, and check out all the other uh, shows that we've done on it. I'm going to read the summary now, and I think you'll find it absolutely fascinating With uh, as we wrap up this section. Here we have a story handed down through the years, father to son, grandfather to grandson, and so forth. Can we trace it back to its origins? Of course not. Should we dismiss it as the mythos of a primitive people that has no basis in scientific fact? The old school of anthropology might do this, but I believe what Robert, Robert Mirabal was told. I believe there was a race of giants that his ancestors encountered. The Judeo-Christian Bible is full of accounts similar to this. Before writing was invented, stories were passed down orally, just like we see in the case of Robert Mirabal. Years ago in the groundbreaking book Roots by Alex Haley, part of the story hinged on an oral account handed down from one slave to another. I remember seeing this in a documentary about the making and writing of the book. Haley went to Africa to the village he was told Kunta Kunte had come from. I'm getting goosebumps as I write this. And there he was led to a man who had memorized the oral traditions of his tribe, going back hundreds of years. He was privileged to sit and listen as the old man went on and on for hours. Finally, there it was. He heard the name Kunto Kinte, who went out in the jungle to make a drum and was never seen again, was captured by the slave traders and then sold to the Americans. It's true. Oral traditions, oral traditions. That man was trained from a very early age, a young boy. And, and same thing, Chief Joseph told us this. They are trained at a very early age. And so these oral traditions, these oral stories are handed down. They are guarded fiercely by the tribe. Haley asked the interpreter what had been said, and he was told that the old man said, Kunta Kinte went out into the forest to find wood to make a drum and never returned. It must have been an amazing moment for Haley, and I still recall seeing it vividly, even though it was years ago. Bottom line for me is this. Mirabal's account, there was a race of giants. We may differ as to their origins. Mirabal believes they are from the stars of the sky, i.e. the sky gods. When we read the account in the book of Enoch, we see that in the days of Jared, 200 watcher angels descended and landed on Mount Hermon. Is there a similarity between the accounts? Was the story that Mirabal heard from a more recent time more specifically after the flood of Noah? If so, this was established what I believe was yet another incursion 
by the fallen watcher angels. From Mirabal's point of view and from the stories handed down to him, giants roam the land. Were these the Nephilim? I think they were. This is chapter 3 of the book, On the Trail of the Nephilim. You can go to elliemarzuli.net and, and uh, procure that for Christmas and and have fun sitting under the tree reading it. Or you can download all seven of our Armor Trail of the Series by going to streaming.lamarzuli.net, streaming.lamarzuli.net. What are you waiting for? Okay, here we go. Our special UFO report. Dear LA, yesterday, this is from Stefano. Dear LA, yesterday, December 15th, while driving, I spotted something in the sky. My wife and I live north of Tampa, Florida. And at approximately 1,700 hours, driving in a western direction, I saw what I first saw with a small cloud in the sky and the sun was reflecting off of it. I knew the sun had just set, so I thought to myself, it was quite odd this cloud was still reflecting so brightly. I checked it out afterward and the sun had set at 17 uh, earlier, 1734. As we continued driving, it did not appear to be a cloud at all. Immediately, I told my wife to take a photo, and unbeknownst to me, she also recorded a quick video. When we show the video, John Adam will hopefully zoom in on it so you can see the object a little more clearly. The object seemed to be moving further away as we were driving, as it was getting closer to the horizon. I knew the object was moving because when I stopped at a traffic light, I was able to see the object in relation to the wire that holds the traffic light. The object kept moving further away from the wire as I continued to look. After that time, we continued on, and eventually it wasn't seen anymore because it was obscured by the tree line. As you can see with the photos and video, this did not appear to look like a plane, bird, or something I can describe. I did look up on the web if there were any SpaceX launches, but not as of December 15th. By all means, this could have been a man-made vehicle. Meteor, I don't know. I would love to hear your thoughts and insights on this. I'm going to roll the, roll the clip. You can see it is dead center of the screen right here. Check it out. So there, there's the there's the still shot, and John Adam will zoom in on that, and you can see um, definitely a light in the sky. Close encounters of the first kind, by the way. So here's the video, and you hear the car engine. I'm going to just turn off the volume. And if you look where my arrow is, right there. And John Adam, I want you to push in on that. Enlarge that as best you can so we can see it. Interesting. And there we have it. Light in the sky. Close encounters of the first kind. So here's the deal. And you got to understand something. I was at dinner with really close friends last night. I got a slurp here. And, and I was talking to my good friend over at Prophecy Watchers, Mondo Gonzalez, today. And in both cases... With Mondo and our good friends last night, Gary and Karen, um, I reiterated and said, people have no idea that when they really show up, everything's going to change. The question is, is the church still here? And Mondo and I have been banding this back and forth about the idea of apostasia, that the man of sin will not be real, that, falling, that, that our gathering unto the Lord, right? The day of the Lord and our gathering to him will not happen. I'll say it again. Second Thessalonians, that the day of the Lord and our gathering to him will not happen until the apostasia. And when you look in the Greek, and I've checked this out numerous times, and I checked it with Mondo again today because I don't read Greek. I can look at lexicons and concordances and study that way, and I do. But, I, but it's always good to find someone who actually can read Greek, Mondo can. And there's an emphasis on the man of sin being revealed and the apostasia, the apostasy. What we're looking at is, are two singular unique events in history. So I truly believe that we are a window of time where we might not go up. We might actually see this revealing of a so-called extraterrestrial presence. And when we do, everything will change. This is what people don't understand. This is why Camera 2 over here is showing our free film. Disclosure, pass it forward. UFO Disclosure, The Coming Great Deception of the Luciferian Endgame. Folks, it's free. If you want to buy the hard copy, go to the website, lamarzuli.net. There's so much information in that. And as we showed right on Rumble, uh, that link is there. You can see what this woman states on the record. It didn't make it into the first version of the film in 2016, released in 2017, but it made it in this version. It'll blow your mind. Check out yesterday's show on Rumble, Roku, or Bitchu. Okay, I might be back here tomorrow. Not sure yet. If not, I'll definitely see you on Monday. Uh, folks, thanks so much for watching. 
uh, on Matrello of Nephilim, and of course, our UFO daily update. If you have pictures, videos like this, a testimony, if you've been taken, if you've been abducted, if you've got missing time, if you've got an implant and you want it removed, please shoot me an email, la at lamarzuli.net. The link is right there, la at lamarzuli.net. That's all the time I have for. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, we'll see you on the air or in the air.